online. And there's nothing wrong in that. Uh, because you can watch it in your pajamas with your cup of coffee and you don't have to participate. But there's something about it I didn't feel it either. Mm -hmm. I tried to get connected. I tried to have my Bible in place. I tried to follow along. And I'm not saying I need to get my husband out of it, but I'm going to say I didn't feel it. And I needed to feel it. Sometimes we just need to feel it. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He is still on the throne. Amen. He is still leading That's his right. country. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. They may have a new Delta virus. They may, but I serve the Alpha Amen. and Amen. the Omega Amen. Amen. that Amen. can handle that situation. So y'all pray for me. I'm not kidding. I haven't sung. I couldn't tell you the last time I've sung. It may sound like cows hollering, but it's for God, so he'll get the glory out of it. Once I went walking down a long, lonely road Thought I had no one who would share my heavy load Then my mind went soaring back to a place I I showed up here this morning with, uh, good, I, I just couldn't get a message. I tried all week to get a message. Sometimes I'll have a thought, I'll have an inkling, I'll go off something. I just couldn't, I couldn't get it. I couldn't shake it. Woke up early this morning, I was like, God, what, are you, what am I going to preach? And, you know, it might sound easy. 
And might, you might think it comes easy just because you're a preacher, but that's not necessarily so. Sometimes it comes real easy, but sometimes it don't. And with, when all the things that you're seeing and hearing and things going on in, in, the, in the community, in the nation we live, you know, you just want to have words that will speak volume and power and help influence people to get along in life. And, and so my thought is today, from the leadership of the Holy Spirit during this service this morning is, we as people need to prepare to meet God. And, you know, we none... In this old world, we never know what we'll face or go through. And there's things that we don't understand and we don't know why. And, but we know one thing for sure, God's still God. And he is on the throne. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. And, you know, the Apostle Paul said that I just know Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know, you, you have a lot of questions. And there's a lot of questions going on. I get asked all through the week, what do you think about this, Pastor? What do you think about this? And all I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'm just going to trust God. And we as God's people need to prepare to meet God. We're not ready as a church to meet God because we become laxed and, and we've, you know, we, we've just uh, got lazy in our spirituality, in our commitment, in our dedication. And, and we've allowed other things to, to creep into place before God. And, you know, I see the church not being the church like God wants them to be the church. And I'm putting myself including in that. You know, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you're not going to heaven, okay? But I'm just saying that we're supposed to be the light of the world that's off the earth. And we're supposed to have power in the name of Jesus, okay? And we're supposed to be overcomers. And we're supposed to be separate and set aside. And I'm telling you, the things that we're facing right now, I'm telling you, is birth pains in what is to come. And if we're going to make it, we've got to be in shape. We've got to be ready and prepared to meet God. And we can only do that by committing our faith. I mean, hook, line, and sinker. In other words, we need to get in or get out. We need to, you know, we need to sell out. And, you know, if, if we're going to be a Christian, we need to be one. We need to live like one. We need to talk like one. We need to walk like one. We need to act like one. Come on. And I mean, if we call ourselves Christians, that means Christ followers, disciples of Christ, okay? And if we're, if we're going to do that, man, we don't know what we're going to face or deal with, but we need to get our family in shape because there's going to come a time we're going to have to draw the line. I'm going to tell you, we're going to come to a cashless society where they can know every move that you make, how every dollar is changed. I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you what to eat, what to drink, where you can go where you can't go and I'm telling you it's coming folks it's coming and them little kids that come in here today you can't give them enough Jesus I'm telling you you need to help them to be strong and you need to let them exercise godliness you need to get them ready so when they go out there they need to know the truth so when they see counterfeit they'll know what it is come on and the truth will set us free and I'm telling you, the Bible said even in the last days, the elect could be deceived. Now, just let me share something with you that I read this week. And, and listen to this. It's found in Revelation. It's in the 13th chapter, and it's in the 16th, 17th, and 18th verse. It says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Listen, here is wisdom, okay? You want some wisdom? You want to do what's right? He said, let him that understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is 600, three score and six, which is 666, six, six. okay, if you will. See, our world values money, power, and pleasure over God's leadership. And I'm telling you, we, we're, it's the world, we're in a pickle. And I'm telling you, you better know Jesus. You better get involved with Jesus. You better have a relationship with Jesus. Church uh, uh, lingo won't get you into heaven or help you to overcome temptation or fall by the wayside. You will. Come on. I'm telling you, you need to get involved. You need to set up. <laughs> you need to get, you, you need to take part. I mean, you, you is or you isn't. Come on. You say you is, but you don't live like you is. Come on. And I'm telling you, it's going to separate the men from the boys, the sheep from the goat. 
I mean, there's things we'll face, your kids will face, and if they ain't got the strength and direction of God, they'll fall by the wayside. Let me tell you, it's easy to go with the flow. The world's enticing, luring, captivating, and it wants your kids, and it'll do all it can to get you and your kids. God come to give life and give it more abundantly. Satan come to kill, steal, and to destroy. Listen to me now, okay? And uh, I have another one to go with that. All right? Hang on just a minute. Because I had, I had all these things written down. Just a minute here. Okay. Over in the 16th chapter, <coughs> excuse me. Well, I know where it is. It's in the 15th chapter, if you will. Okay? Oh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. I, hey, I'm, I read all these. You want something good to read? Read in Revelation. Man, I'm going to tell you what. You'll see some things right now going on. Listen to what it says here. This is in the, uh, the uh, 14th chapter and the 9th verse. It said, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Okay? Chapter 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the name uh, number of his name, and stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are the works, Lord God Almighty, just, just and true are the ways of the King of the saints. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you don't, if you don't stand for that, and you don't give God glory and praise, and you honor him, and I'm telling you, you lay hold to him, the beast will take you over. Now, I'm telling you, right now, they're telling you, if you don't do certain things, I'm telling you that, that you can't get in here, you can't get in there, you can't go here, and you can't go there. Now, I'm telling you, that's not the mark of the beast, but it's leading to what it'll be like during the mark of the beast. So the best thing you or I can do as God's people is to get ready. Okay, God help us to get strong, help us to have direction, help us not to waver, help us not to fall, if you will, by the wayside. I'm telling you, we're not concerned about our family, it's lost. We get them involved in everything there is to get them involved in, but church. We become laxed and want, we don't have convictions over sin or the way the world's going or the way the world's living or the way the church is living, okay? The altars are empty, the churches are empty, Come on, and in a time like this, you would think it'd be full and people would sell out to the things of God. Come on. It said in the last days, even the elect could be easily deceived and people's being deceived and they're living in fear and they're hearing what the news is saying and what's going on in the world instead of listening to what the preacher's saying and the word of God is teaching. It's time to stand up. Come on. We need to be ready. God, give me the courage. Give me the boldness. Help me to deal with this. God, what I do, I stay faithful in the things of God. I keep praying. I keep studying. I keep giving him praise. I know he'll not leave me or forsake me. And here's the passage of scripture that God gave me during this, this morning service here. I want you to go to Romans chapter 8. And I want you to go to the 35th verse of Romans chapter 8. Okay? No, I tell you what, go to the 31st verse of Romans chapter 8, because I don't want to leave this out. Romans 8. Everyone, if you have a Bible, turn there. If you ain't got a Bible, you better get you one, because it's a sword and you'll need it. It's a road atlas for your life. It helps you to overcome temptation. Amen? Just like you got Garmin on your phone, or you got a road atlas map, and, and you got it all marked up, you need to get your Bible all marked up. I'm going to tell you, it'll help you. You need to get your kids ready. You need to get your spouse ready. You need to get your neighbor ready. You need to get your uh, church friends ready. Come on. We need to be ready to meet God. We need to be in shape. I'm telling you. You know, if we're going to be an army, we, we, need, we, we need to work out like an army. Okay? We can't just never shoot. <laughs> we got to go shoot. <laughs> Come on. Amen. You know what I'm saying? We got to pray. We got to be faithful with one another. I will not overcome the things of the world. We'll be easily deceived. We'll be easily persuaded. Let me tell you, you go send your kids to college. You know how many college press, uh, professors, 
don't believe in God and they want to teach your kids that there is no God and if you don't give them the truth when they get over there in college they're going to believe counterfeit and they need to know what truth is but half of them never go to church you never commit them to church you never commit them to youth group you never commit them to children's church you let them go anywhere they want to go but you're laxed on bringing them to church and letting them hear the word of God come on I'm telling you, it's the greatest thing you could give. And one day you'll say, preacher, you was right. You'll say, you was right. You'll, you'll, you'll listen, you'll want your kids to go far in the world, but do you want them to go far in their spirituality? You want them to date the right person, marry the right person, if you will, huh? go to the right school, live in the right neighborhood, huh? have the job that God wants them to have? I'm telling you, God's got a plan. Before they was even formed in the womb, God's got a plan for your kids. And they're your gifts, and you got one shot at it. Come on. And I want to tell you, you ought to pray with them, you ought to love them, you ought to care for them, and you ought to go to bank for them when it comes to the spiritual things. And if we're not careful, we do more of the worldly things for our family and our kids than we do the spiritual. Church is last on everything. And church ought to be first. Like it or not, get mad, spit, leave, I can't help you. But I can help you if you'll come and listen to the Word of God. It'll set you free. Amen? It hurts. Sometimes truth hurts, even for me. Amen? I'm preaching to myself now. You with me? And I'm going to tell you what, we need to get ready. We need to get in shape. We need to put on the whole armor of God that we'll be able to withstand the wiles of Satan. Listen, I can't listen to all that junk and filth. When I get up in the morning, I've got to listen to the Word of God. God, you tell me what I need to do today. How am I going to deal with this? How am I going to handle this? How am I going to pray with people? How am I going to talk to people? How am I going to lead people? I need the teaching of God's holy Word. I listen to the news. I can't lead them nowhere but astray. Come on. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You're seeing and hearing things that you never would have thought that we would experience now. And we're seeing it. And it's coming to pass. We've got to be ready. It's not a joke. It's not a fairy tale. You need to get your family ready. Joshua said in, in Joshua 24, and I think verse 24 or 5, he said, he said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Okay? And I'm telling you, all these things are... Uh, creeping in and easing in to families, church people who know better, huh? And they ain't taking a stand. They're compromising and justifying. They're, there's, you're going to have to pick your fight. You're going to have to pick what mountain you're going to die on. You're going to have to pick where you're going to draw a line because there's going to come a day. There's going to come a time. There's going to come a place in your job, in your school, in your marriage, in the raising of your kids where you're going to have to draw a line because if you don't, you'll be overcome with things of the world. Even in your church, you're going to have to draw a line. Now, there's people sitting in church, and I'm telling you, they tickle your ear, they scratch your back, and they tickle your feet, and they won't tell you the truth, huh? And they lie to you, and they deceive you, and people sit there, and they never break open the Word of God to see if it's the truth or not, and they sit in it, and they say they're having good church, and they're being lied to. Come on. Amen? It is what it is. Sin still sin, black still black, white still white. Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's still men and women who fought for our country, died for that flag to make it free and liberty that we can preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Go, Jesus, go. Huh? I'm telling you, it's time to get committed. Some of you, it's wishy-washy. Some of you riding the fence. Some of you won't sell out. Some of you got the head knowledge, not the heart knowledge. You need to get up out of your seat today and you need to march down the altar and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We want to be accountable. We want people to know they can count on us. Come on. Anybody here? Come on, give me a praise. Amen, give him a praise. Amen. There'll be a few give a praise. Not many, but there'll be a few. There'll be a few say amen, but there won't be many say amen. There was 10 virgins. You ever read that story? There was five wise and there was five unwise. They, they all had lamps, but only five had the oil. A lot of, a lot of people go to church, they ain't got the oil. You got to have the oil, man. You got to have the Holy Spirit. Huh? You can talk the talk all you want, but man, if you ain't got the oil, you ain't going to make it. And it said, what happened? God shut the door. And they said, give us some of your oil. It was too late. Can't give you my oil. <laughs> huh? Door shut. It's over. You need to get ready. Listen to this passage of Scripture. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. 
How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay any thing to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? You know, this past week, we got a light bill. And we got a water bill. And we got an insurance bill. Okay? But you know what's so magnificent? I didn't get a bill from God. I didn't get a bill for enjoying his sunshine. I didn't get a bill for drinking his water or breathing his air. Glory, glory be to God. I didn't get a bill from being able to see what I see and go to the plate. I didn't get a bill. I got grace. Amen. It was he who died. It was he who rose again. It's he that's on the right hand side of the Father. It's he that's coming to get his church. It's he that has all power and all authority. He's the well living waters. He's the God of forgiveness. He's the God of grace. He's the God of mercy. And I want to cry out and say, God, show us mercy. Hallelujah. Come on. I thought about this list I wrote out this morning, all these names on the prayer list. Some need a miracle. Bad, they need a miracle, bad. They need a healing touch from God. They need Dr. Jesus. And I thought about, we got the power in the church to pray for them, to go to bat for them, huh? To lift them up to God if you will, to ask God to show favor that they'll be touched by the master. You never know when your name will be on there. Huh? And so we need to go to bat for them today. And I thought, praise God, we've joined to God's house today. But listen, it, it don't quit now. Who shall? We don't know what we'll face. You, you kids don't know what you'll face. We forgot what it was like to get up and play cowboys and Indians, to go down to the old fishing hole, catch crawdads and frogs. Huh? You'll be able to have the freedom and liberty, ride your bicycle to school, and go down the street, and mom and dad not worry. Huh? Leave your door open. Leave the church doors open all week long. If anybody wants to go to church, go in and pray or cool off or just sit, they can go in the church. Now you've got to lock the church doors. Huh? Well, we forgot what it was like, huh? Getting dirty in the old mud and water holes, if you will. Huh? When, see, we need to throw them old stinking phones away. They've caused a lot of problems in our life. Do you know that? Amen. That st stupid internet. Huh? You think of the lives it's took and captivated and destroyed. Huh? Come on. And used to, your kids knew how to play outside and how to play tag and how to take rides and how to make homemade ice cream on a Friday night and how to visit their cousins. Come on. Now they don't even know their cousins. <laughs> huh? Come on. Amen. People used to eat together at a table. <laughs> and that, that's unheard of. <laughs> to, to take, can't even get to the table. <laughs> We eat on the run. We're fast food people. Huh? Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Huh? We need to get some good old days back in our life. Amen. Give me that old time religion. Huh? If you will. Amen. I'm thinking if the church don't step up and let God be God. Where are we going to be? Where are we going to end up? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? It is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all things, all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, present, okay, nor things to come, okay, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. No matter what, huh? We got to lay hold to the precious Word of God. And I ask you today, I want to ask you, as for every family here today, are you ready to meet God? Is your children ready to meet God? 
Is your spouse ready to meet God? What comes first before you and God? Are you really where you need to be with God? Do you really believe and know the power of prayer? Have you asked for forgiveness and asked Jesus to come to your heart and be your Lord and Savior? Do you know if you was to die right now where you'd spend eternity? Huh? Are you ready to meet God? Is your children ready to meet God? If Jesus was to come back today, where would you go? Huh? Is, do you need to get off the stool? Do you need to start talking to a member? You need to start praying for a member. You need to go to bat for a member. Maybe you, before you can lead anybody else, you need to get up on your own and say, you know what? I, I've been laxed. I've allowed other things to get in the way. And God forgive me. I want to rededicate my life right here today. I want to let you, God help me by your grace to be God first and foremost in my life. Help me in my weaknesses. Help me to overcome. Help me to be the witness you want me to be. You know, what's the things you need to confess? Get out of your life. Get right with God. Maybe you got closed off areas. You let God go so far. Maybe somebody's hurt you. Maybe they broke your heart. You know, maybe you had a bad upbringing. Maybe you've been molested. You know, maybe you've been hurt bad. Maybe your parents have died. Maybe you was adopted. And things don't seem fair and it don't seem right, but I want you to know if God be for you, who can be against you? Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. And we can't live in bitterness and ever make it forward. God don't care about your past. He cares about your future. And I want to ask you today, as families, as individuals, if you're not where you need to be, you need to get up and come. You need to get up and come. You don't need to be intimidated. You don't need to leave let Satan talk you out of it. You need to get up and come to the altar. How do you do it? You get up out of your seat and you get your pride out of the way and you say, he was talking to me. And you get up and you go to the altar. This, isn't, this shouldn't be uncomfortable for a Christian. Huh? For a sinner, come and ask God, God, will you please forgive me my sin, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Help me live a Christian life. Help me to overcome my fleshly ways, and to be spirit-minded. God, let my past be gone and live in the newness of life coming to my heart and not worry about what anybody else thinks or what anybody else says or cares. I know there's somebody in here today. I know God prepared you to be here today to hear this message. And it's time the church get on fire and wake up. And some of you, you need to get committed. You need to get dedicated in the things of God. You hear me? And so I ask you today, one thing you can do, there's a bunch of people here that need prayed for. They need a miracle. And I'm going to tell you, I'm here today because somebody called my name out. I had a dad who was not embarrassed to ask his congregation, would you pray for my son? And when you see him out somewhere, would you witness to him? And would you invite him to church? And you know what? It happened. And he sick people on me. And it worked. People went to the altar and they prayed for me. Pray for Kevin McNeely. Thank you, Dad. Will you go to bat? Hmm? How are you? I'm telling you, you can't trifle with God. You can't play church, guys. You can't play it. It's real. It's a real deal. And I ask you to come today. I know God wants you to come today. You have a need today. You come today. You have a need. I know there's a lot of needs. You know? It's like the old boy, you know, on TV say, somebody's got a back problem. Somebody's got a back problem. Huh? Somebody's got a need. We know that. But do you know that? Huh? How about it today? Would you come? Would you? Would you come? Would you get up out of your seat and admit that you need God? Huh? Would you? Huh? And you know what? God's not going to say, I'll give you $100. Maybe if you come, you get a million. Huh? But I'm going to tell you what, he become poor, you might be rich. Rich in forgiveness, rich in mercy, rich in grace. There is power in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army and it's rising up. There's an army and it's rising up. There's an loving arms around him. Let the angels that camp around about him in the hospital right now. I pray that God he'll feel a touch from the master. I pray you raise him up. I pray he'll give you the glory and the honor of God. He'll feel a mighty touch right now in that hospital bed. I pray right now he'll feel the mighty hand of God. Please God intervene and touch him Lord. Help him God. Please make a way for him God. Please give him wisdom and knowledge to do and make the right decisions for Dave. In Jesus' name, this granddaughter believes and knows the power of prayer. And she stands in the gap today for her grandpa. She knows that prayer changes things. And that you're God and that you're able. I pray you make a way, God. Make a way. Please, God, make a way. Help us, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Make a way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
shame to break every chain to break every chain I wasn't with everybody at the altar here this morning but if you gave your heart to Jesus or rededicated your life this morning would you raise your hand would you okay we have one right over here gave her heart to Jesus this morning amen let's give God a big hand amen praise the Lord that's awesome Amen. All right. Don't forget those on the prayer list. They need a miracle. Don't forget how important it is to live for Christ. It's a no-lose situation. You can't go wrong. I just really feel in my spirit this morning that somebody needs to come up here. This is one of them ones that we've been. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Way to go. Yeah. We're having a baptism tonight. Lucas. Uh, he's going to get baptized tonight. So, you know, if you want to be baptized tonight, Kendra, you can be baptized tonight. Your daughter Rachel was baptized. You know. Yeah, anybody else wants to be baptized that's come to profess faith in Jesus can be baptized tonight. All right? Don't take lightly. You listen to me. You'll hear it. It'll be in the air. You'll smell it. You'll see things going on, and you'll remember the message Kevin preached. And it'll put you on the spot sometimes with people. You, you mark my word. Hold it. <laughs> you mark God's word. Amen. And I'm telling you, this week, you just listen and pay attention. You'll see the things that's going on. You'll have to draw a line. Otherwise, you'll be a compromiser and you'll be a justifier. You have to draw a line. Thank you all who sung today. It was good God anointed songs. And I thank you. All. Now, listen, you know, in. in if you got a recliner tonight or you got something you want to do around 6 o'clock, would you tell it you have to wait to about 7 or 7.30? And would you come back and have church with us? Amen. Huh? And remember, when you get that electric bill and you have to pay it, and then when you be able to go out and walk out and get in your car and drive your nice vehicle with that nice air conditioning, and you go eat you a nice meal today, and you get to go do them wonderful, wonderful things that God's gave you, just think a minute about what could I give back to God tonight that saved me, gives me my very next breath. Could I come back and just learn more about God and give Him praise and just be that light that God wants, that witness in the world that needs me? Huh? I mean, is it wrong to have a double header on a Sunday? Huh? We have them in baseball. Why can't we have them at church? Come on. And so I invite you to come back tonight. God bless y'all. But before you leave, you got to tell at least five people, bye. Five people or you can't leave. Hey, bye. 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 Bye, Jing. I know you hear me when I pray Well, I'm down here in trouble, Lord Send an angel by my way Well, they put old Paul in prison Long about the midnight hour he began to call on Jesus, and that's when they heard him cry, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. Well, I'm down here in trouble, Lord. Send an angel by my way. For that city 
Just call on Jesus 